The cup of Diet Coke flew out of the stands at the palace and splattered on Ron Artez, prompting the craziest fight ever seen in a basketball arena and sending the Pacers into full crisis mode. He leaped into the stands and started to go mayhem. Players fighting fans, fans fighting players, a chair is thrown, bottles are tossed, you name it. You know that invisible wall that separates athletes from fans in the stands was demolished with a snap of a finger. Pacers had to get the players, coaches, and staff safely out of the visitors' locker room and make sure that the players who threw punches at Pistons fans got on the team plane and out of town without a threat of arrest and contact lawyers before the for sure phone call from NBA league officials. <laughs> course of our time covering sports and playing sports we all have agreed that this is clearly the worst thing we have ever seen it's one of those things that almost sounds like it's an out-of-body experience that you didn't really believe what you were watching you had a chance It all started November 19th, 2004, at the Palace in Auburn Hills, Michigan, a game between Pacers and the defending champions, Detroit Pistons. The meeting was the first meeting between the two teams since the previous season Eastern Conference Finals, which the Pistons won in Game 6 and route to their first NBA title since the Bad Boys era in the late 1980s. This caused the game to receive much hype from the media and fans. Having won two games in a row, the Pacers came into the game with a 6-2 record while the Pistons, the defending champions, began their season 4-3. The Pacers got off to a quick start, opening up a 20-point lead with 7 minutes to go before halftime. The Pistons opened the third quarter with a 9-2 run, but the Pacers ended it with a buzzer-beating three-pointer and a layup from Jamal Tinsley, heading into the fourth. The Pacers were led by the 24-point effort of Ron Artez, who scored 17 in the first quarter. So, I mean, as of right now, the game seemed as a pretty hard-fought game, even though the Pacers pulled ahead with a pretty good lead. Both teams were getting off shots back-to-back, -back, but just when the hard-playing game was about to come to an end is when everything changed instantly to what is now called the most infamous brawl in NBA history. You're sitting on the couch, you're watching... And your life is passing you by. You keep procrastinating over and over. Well, no, do it right now. Why are you making it complicated? It's easy. The Pacers have played a very intelligent game tonight. Oh. And Wallace is fouled. And Wallace did. Oh, oh. Wallace right at our chest. This and we ruined it by having a, uh, having a fight in the stands. We, we, it was a definitely a chance for us to let the whole world know that this is the Pacers you have to win in the championship. And we made that statement but we killed everything by, by being jerks and, uh, and having that incident stand. 45.9 seconds left in the game with Pacers leading 97-82. Ben Wallace was fouled from behind by Ron Artez, who slapped him across the back of the head during a layup attempt. Ben Wallace was already known in the league for not to take any BS, and he responded by shoving Artez in the face with both hands, causing players from both teams to quickly get in between them as they attempted to keep the two separated. The Pacers have played a very intelligent team tonight. Oh. And Wallace is fouled, and Wallace did. Oh. Oh. Wallace. Right. After all that rowdiness, Artez went to go lay down on the scorer's table to relax. Why would he do that, you may ask? Well, the Pacers president, Donnie Walsh, stated that Artez was following advice he had received on how to calm down and avoid trouble in a violent situation. So I mean, I guess you can say he was pretty much doing the right thing in the things that he was told. While Artez was laying on the broadcaster's table, that's when the fan, John Green, threw a cup full with Diet Coke at Artez, hitting him in the chest. Artez jumped off the table, ran into the stands, and grabbed the man, Michael Ryan, who he thought believed was responsible. Pacers broadcaster Mark stood up to try and hold back Artez and was trampled in the effort, suffering five fractured vertebrates and a cut on his head. 
Now you see why this guy needed to take advice from his president of the team. Ron Artez's teammate, Jackson, followed him into the stands and punched a fan in the face in retaliation for a man throwing another drink in Artez's face while being restrained by other fans. Artez is in the stands! Oh, this is awful. Fans are getting... So now after that 20 to 30 seconds mayhem, Ron Artez finally made his way back onto the court and things began to look like they were settling down. He was confronted by two more Piston fans. The first, Alvin Shackelford, took a huge right hook from Artez and Jermaine O'Neal used a running start to throw a haymaker at Hadid's jaw. Had O'Neal not slipped a little bit, he might have knocked the guy out. With the arena no longer safe, the referees ended the game with 45.9 seconds left in the fourth quarter, with the Pacers becoming victorious with 97 to 82. As Pacer players were herded through the tunnel to the locker room, fans threw everything from drinks, popcorn, coins, and even a folded chair. Like, what is a folded chair doing in a basketball stadium? A pro stadium at that. Pistons coach Larry Brown grabbed a microphone in the middle of the court and tried to calm the rowdy crowd but he threw it down to the ground after realizing talking wasn't going to calm this crowd of thousands of fans down. The police soon arrived to put the foolery to end. The little security they had at the beginning wasn't equipped to handle such an event. fans were injured and two were hospitalized. Now back to the Pacers locker room, Artez asked Jackson if he thought the players would get in trouble. Like what? Jackson responded, are you serious? Trouble? Ron, we'll be lucky if we have a freaking job. Kind of scratches on my legs and I don't feel a thing. And I'm sitting back and I'm looking at him and it's Jamal Tens and Ron like, bro, yo, yo, Dunny. It's a New York word, Quarters Bears <laughs> word, Dunny. Yo, you think we're gonna get in trouble? Yo, we was like, whoa. <laughs> he said, yeah, that Ron said it like, yo, trouble. you think we're gonna have a job, bro? Not <laughs> oh, trouble. Man. You the conversation convinced and amazed Jackson that Artez wasn't in the right mind. Auburn Hills police entered the locker room to make arrests, but the team rushed Artez onto the bus and refused to take him off. The police decided to protect the Pacers as they left the arena and to later contact the team after reviewing game film. Okay, this is a long list, so get ready. Members of the Pacers, Ron Artez, Jermaine O'Neal, Steven Jackson, Reggie Miller, Anthony Johnson, Jamal Tinsley, Scott Portland, James Jones, David Harrison, and assistant coach Mike Brown. And for the Pistons, Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, Tayshawn Prince, Darvin Ham, Derek Coleman, Lindsey Hunter, Chauncey Billups and Eldon Campbell were all caught up in either trying to break up fights or help their teammates. Several fans were involved as well. John Green, who threw the cup at Artez, initially Charles Hadid and Alvin Shackelford were the ones who went onto the court before being punched by players. Bryant Jackson threw the chair at O'Neal. Two other fans were charged with assault and battery. On November 20th, 2004, the NBA suspended Artez, Jackson, O'Neal, and Wallace indefinitely, saying that their actions were shocking, repulsive, and inexcusable. The following day, the NBA announced that nine players would be suspended for a total of 146 games, 137 games for the Pacer players, and nine games for the Piston players, meaning $11 million dollars in total loss salary. Ron Artez was being far punished the hardest and losing nearly $5 million in unearned salary. On November 19th, uh, Indiana's Ron Artez has been suspended for the remainder of the season. His 86 game suspension is still the longest non-drug related suspension in basketball history. Ron played just 16 games as a pacer after the fight before the team traded him to the Sacramento Kings. After that night, you knew the NBA had to come up with new security guidelines. 
Some teams even immediately increase security presence at games. Ultimately, as you look back, they always say hindsight is 2020. Was this a good thing for the NBA having this breakout in Auburn Hills? It was a great thing okay. because now you can see. During that time, 10 years ago, you could come in an arena, they wouldn't check you. Now yeah, we got yeah. metal detectors, we got people check, checking bags, purses, we got more rules. We got players, if they go off the bench, two feet, they're getting suspended. I'm sure being there in the moment, for some people, it was probably scary. But as we go back to look at it many years later, it's kind of funny, in my opinion. <laughs> See you in the next one. I actually couldn't believe my eyes. I was petrified because I didn't know what was going to happen.